What's up guys, Lou in here at GarageBand and beyond. Today I'm gonna to be telling you guys some very specific settings to get an awesome bass tone for your recordings at home. This is gonna be for anybody with a four string electric bass. It'll work for any bass really. Um, there's definitely some lessons in here for all basses, but this bass is a P bass knockoff. This is a rock bass from 1986 check out that very 80s headstock which i love um but yeah stripped down same pickup same everything just you know really stripped down super good cheap bases if you're looking for one anyway the bass tone we're going to be talking about today is this one and what i want you to hear as i play here is the evenness in volume and tone of each individual note okay <laughs> Nice, um, nice, easy tone, right? Everything is there. You hear everything. You hear a little bit of the plucking from the fingers. Um, not too much buzzing. I have a noise gate on, so when I'm not playing, you know, in between the notes, <laughs> the notes, you're not getting any buzzing. But anyway, so that's that's that. So what I'm talking about here today is, you know, the when I'm talking about evenness of tone, a lot of that is going to be coming out of your hands, okay? So as you're playing your bass part, um, just make sure that you are, you know, located somewhere, somewhere here on the strings, wherever you want to be. I sort of tend to be closer to the bridge, but wherever you have to be to be able to apply even pressure as you play across the string. So, you know, what's required up here is totally different for what's required down here. So the tensions are different, requirements of plucking pressure will be different. So you just need to sort of keep that in mind as you're playing and just try to play evenly, okay? So that's number one. Number two, input setting level. Um, I'm using my audio box USB today, the PreSonus. So actually this tone is gonna be a little brighter than normal because the preamps in the PreSonus are a little bright. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm using. And um, the input level is set to, you know, the bass is turned all the way up. The input level there is turned just a little bit above nine o'clock on the dial. So um, it's sort of a low input signal, but I get, as you can see in this recording here, um, this is, you know, the signal that I got. Nice, even looking signal. And that's, you know, no compression or anything. If you look at this signal right here, no compression, that's, you know, just even playing. Uh, okay, so now let's get into some actual settings. All right, so let's get, well, I'll turn the virtual mixer off. That's not doing anything. Noise gate, we'll leave on just because. Okay, so first thing is first. Okay, this, and I will say this preset that I'm giving you today is something that I personally start with every single time I sit down with this bass to record or anybody's bass. This is my go-to preset 100% of the time now. This is where I start and then I work out of this to, you know, tailor this setting to the song. But these settings will definitely help you get some good tones, okay? So first off here, you should notice no amp simulator of any sort, okay? Um, I'm going direct and that was the tone. That's just what I found to work for me and I think it works really well. So this boost knob, so just check this out. High f the high frequency cut is on and the boost knob is turned just a little bit past 12 o'clock there. And the tone knob here is obviously on and is turned to number three. If you don't know, number one is sort of dark and number six is super bright, okay? So number three is uh, a nice in between there, a little closer to the darker sound. Uh, this is all the way to direct box dynamic that's not doing anything and the output is negative 12 db okay oh oh and this is set to hi-fi di I, you should get that too which is under this pull down menu okay so that's the direct box setting that i'm using next one up oh this is the big one get your pen and paper ready okay so here's let me move this down here so uh this is what i want you to really study carefully here so as i play I want you to notice how nothing is going above negative 30 dB there. Right? You see that? So it's all staying right at that line in the middle where the EQ is hovering, if you don't know what, exactly what I'm talking about. But as I play across the board, across the strings here, um, you'll see very little frequency ranges popping up above that. And that, I think I got a little 
that's a little distortion from the input here, so I'm going to turn that down. Touch. There it is. Okay. So, point being, um, that is sort of what you want to be looking at. So, if when you go to play your bass and you look at this analyzer or the EQ and the analyzer is turned on, you would see that a lot of this stuff in the, you know, call it somewhere between 50 and 100 hertz, closer to 100 there, um, a lot of that stuff is going to be way over that 30 line. So just make sure that whatever EQ you do, you're really dropping everything down. And that super low end roll off, that cutoff is, you know, anything between 50 to 20, totally fat. You don't really need it. Um, it's doing more harm than good if you want a good rich bass tone that has volume to it and not it's not mushy and overbearing, right? That is not where good bass tone lives. Good bass tone sort of lives, you know, right below 100 hertz and 200. That's where that sound of the low end, that's what you're looking for. And not so much in the high end. But. So anyway, let's go across these. Get your pen and paper. Here you go. Uh, cut is 64 hertz and the slopes at 48 db at the octave and 0.39 is the q okay low end is 82 hertz the gain is at negative 6 db and the q is 0.10 uh more low end this has got a little bump up here this is 285 hertz plus 1.5 db and the q is 0.71. I'm looking at these numbers in the lower right hand corner if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, this one here we are in the mids, low mids. This is 485 hertz. The gain is plus four. The Q is 0.71. And this is actually, well, let's see. No, these guys are off. So we can leave those off. And this one, actually, I did use this to cut a little bit. They're a little high in that 245 hertz that 200 range is sort of problematic it's always the area where a lot of squirreliness is so uh 245 hertz at negative 2 db and the q is 0.71 okay so that is the exact eq setting that i want you to plug in to your eq um okay and now we go down to the compressor and this is the last bit of it okay so i'm using pull this in the middle i'm using this uh, fet electric bass if you don't know that is under guitars and it is the second thing under guitars compression threshold is negative 9 db the ratio is 5 to 1 the attack is 59 milliseconds and the gain is set to zero um you know you can attenuate that as you need and of course the threshold you will be attenuating a little bit of course um, but I think that five to one ratio really works nicely. And, uh, but that threshold will sort of be up to your playing, but I think starting at negative nine is a really nice place. It lets it breathe, but it comes out nice and evenly. Um, and you don't hear the over compression. Okay. So these are the settings. Now I'm just going to last thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to let you listen to something that I've been working on for somebody just to sort of prove my point. Um, I got to actually turn the automation off on here because I'm going to turn it up a little bit louder than normal. But this is the channel we're talking about. And, you know, don't forget, I record and mix for you guys. And this is something a guy just sent me vo uh, vocals and guitar and I filled out the rest of it. So we're just going to give a quick listen. And I want you to just listen how the bass, this bass, that's exact tone set up uh, what it sounds like in a full mix. Here it is. Okay, so I am super proud of that tone and this track in particular. Um, but it was sort of this song and this particular preset. I was like, you know what? I bet people would really appreciate having some specific numbers to take and uh, use at home to try to get some good bass tones because this it's a tough thing. I know, I know how hard it is to find a good bass tone that you can get good volume out of. And that's exactly what this is. And the big thing to take away from this video is even playing not a lot of like super low end on the bass track and just a nice easy compressor um 
So that's it, you guys. If you have any questions, please, please, please leave them in the comments below or find me over on Facebook on GarageBand and Beyond.com or no, on uh, GarageBand on Facebook, GarageBand and Beyond <laughs> on Facebook. Ah, And um, of course, if you really do like what I'm doing here and you'd like to support the channel and help it grow, which I would really appreciate, please check out my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash GarageBand and Beyond. And um, there's, you know, rewards and all sorts of stuff over there. But yeah, I'm really trying to make things better uh, for you guys. All of that money is 100% of that money is going back into the channel so I can give more stuff to you guys. Uh, that's what I want to do. So if you can help me give more to you, that'd be awesome. And um, of course, subscribe and uh, oh, oh, mailing list people. There's a sale coming up. So if you're on the mailing list, good for you. If you don't know about my mailing list, go sign it on garagebandandbeyond.com. You get a free thing for signing up. No big deal there. And uh, I'm giving, uh, I do discounts on the equipment that I review and we have an awesome sale coming up on microphones. So you guys, peace. Have a great day. Love you. Talk to you soon. Bye.